On the top of the camera, hit the on off switch. On the flip out display, make sure at the top left you have a U and the lightning bolt with a cross through it. That means that your user settings are enacted and the flash is turned off. In the bottom left, make sure your battery is at least halfway full. If you're shooting more than five or six, make sure to use a full battery. On the bottom right, the 1508 means the number of shots you have left on your SD card. Make sure you calculate at least 30 to 35 shots per image and that you have enough to shoot the paintings you have left to do. If you run out of battery life or SD card space in the middle, the camera will shut down and you will need to start restart it. Shoot the painting from the beginning. Now we're going to discuss the tripod operations. So this, um, this knob right here controls uh, whether you can shift this plate uh, left to right. So what we need is this plate to be uh, perpendicular to the wall or parallel to the wall, depending on which, uh, which side you're measuring from. And then um, this particular uh, knob right here, which is this one here, uh, determines whether the camera, we're going to back it up. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you. The camera goes up or down. So when we need to do the next row, this is the knob that we operate it from. When we do the left to right, uh, left to right movements, we um, are going to use this knob right underneath here. So this will be open, uh, but you just reach underneath here and you just grab this knob and you move it left to right like this. This camera should not be uh, messed with. We have the exact nodal point of this camera, which I did all the tests to find out where uh, the pivot is for the, the nodal point, so which is right here. This, this particular angle or this particular rotation on the canvas causes the least amount of uh, parallax in the lens. If you are interested in any of those terms, you can look up pano photography and um, figure out what the nodal point is. This is a nodal point slider. Um, and everything's set up for this particular camera just the way it is. So we just leave the camera mounted the entire time. I have an exact same camera that I use out in the field, um, but this one is set up with all the white balance and the, the user settings that we need, the uh, second ratio and ISO, etc. Hit the on off switch, zoom in. Looking for the little bugger on top over here and the side edge over there. Now we'll I'm going to do one third on. Two thirds on the painting, one third off, so it focuses in the right area. And we're going to take our remote control. Oops, we need to go to this setting here. And we need to go to that one right there. Hit OK. Now we can use our remote control. Then we're going to see where this one third is, that part of the ear there. We're gonna move the camera just horizontally until that part of the ear is on the left side. I'm gonna hit the remote control again. Oops. Then we're gonna take like this area right here where we can see uh, the top of the eyebrow, like right there. And we're gonna move 
the camera to there. Let it settle for a second or two. Take the next shot with the remote control. Then we're going to go to the muzzle right here. Make sure that we don't go over half off if we have it. Now we're going to go uh, vertically down on the painting. So see where that muzzle is right there? We're going to come to there maybe a little bit higher like there. So let's take this, this uh, uh, lever on the bottom and let's go so we can see that right about there, I think. And then let's go left to right again. So we're going to scooch under here, move the camera to the left, one third on, one third off. Hit it with the remote control again. See the top of the head where it meets the blue? We're going to put that on the left hand thing like that. All right, now we're going to go to the eyebrows uh, right about here. So, then we're going to go to the top of the nose, right about there. Then we're going to go to about right here. Do one third on, one third off, so about right like that, and we move it with this. Okay, one third on, one third off. Remote control. The remote control works best to the top of the camera, so if you try to aim it at the bottom of the camera, you may find that it is. Let it settle in the position harder to. Uh, All right, then we're going to go to a third, which is about there, down, so we see that at the top. And then we're going to go left to right again. So grab this knob. All right. The shaking of this camera is the tripod for, for the iPhone, not the camera itself. If the camera itself is shaking, we need to not take the shot because it'll turn out fuzzy and it'll uh, blow the whole pan out and we'll have to re-photograph it again. So we start wait until the camera stops shaking and then we can take the photo if this camera was shaking here. But it's actually this one right here. So, <clears throat> all right, so the next thing that we do is we zoom out and zoom back in a little bit. We want to take a photograph of the painting, um, of the total painting. That way we have a reference. If the panel moves uh, the eye or something, we'll be able to tell if, um, if it's out of proportion. So we try to take a couple of these. Maybe we'll do three. And then we take a photograph of our hand. This we can just hand shoot it even uh, like this. That way we know we're in between photographing of paintings. When we do a pano photograph, uh, one of the tricks that we do is we just use this little piece of foam core on the top. This particular painting of a bobcat is 48 inches wide. So we will look for the 48 inches on the uh, piece of foam core, which is right there where the flamingo is. And uh, that's at 16 inches. So what we do is we zoom in with the uh, pano camera to this particular area. Let me turn it this way and we're gonna zoom in 
what we want to do is we just want to have a little hair of the background showing on the left hand side of the canvas with the uh, flamingo uh, on the top. That's our little gadget that we try to zoom into. So that way we know that the, the painting is cut into one thirds. So the first shot that we move the camera over here is we do one third off to the wall and two thirds of the painting on both horizontal and vertical. This is where we would take our first shot in the uh, panel camera. Then we'd move the panel camera uh, two thirds of the way over here and we'd keep the horizontal level and we'd take another shot at this particular area. So then we'd uh, take a look at like a specific spot or something on the bobcat and we would move the camera over two thirds of the way again so we'd go to about here and then we'd take the next shot whoops keep it vertically the same and then um, we'd go two thirds again to about here take the next shot two thirds here take the next shot so uh, this little handy thing up here is just showing us where the one third marker is for our initial zoom in so we have the right distance if we were to take uh, the first shot if we were to zoom into this we'd only have two shots and it wouldn't really be big enough uh, to do the really large prints that we need to do so we need to zoom into one third here and then move the camera out and take like about five shots over um, it should be five six maybe seven if you overlap a lot and then we come down two thirds and take the next row um, to do a better illustration of this let me show you on a diagram Okay, so the green in this in this particular uh, diagram is the painting. So this is the outside edges of the painting. So uh, this is the little flamingo that's on the top, uh, that we put on the top at the one third mark. So if this painting was 48 inches across, we put would put that at the 16 inch mark. So that's 16 inches. Then we zoom in with the camera. Uh, so this uh, part of the painting is on the left hand side of our shot. Our shot is in a vertical formation. And this is on uh, the right hand side of our shot. So and then so then we uh, zoom into that. So we've got the right zoom ratio. Then we move the camera position. Um, so it takes the shot one third on uh, or one third off rather and two thirds on the painting. So this first uh, red box here represents the first shot. Um, so it's like one third off of the painting and two thirds on the on the painting in both the vertical direction and the horizontal direction. Um, then we go over and we would take the second shot overlapping this shot by one third. So that's the overlap there. So this is the second shot. Um, this blue, the, which is represented by this blue box. Now, this would actually be straight across, but I moved it down a little bit just so the diagram would be easier to read. But it actually would be at a straight uh, line across here. So you wouldn't drop it down at all. So anyway, so first shot is here. Second shot is here. Then we move over uh, a third. So we're overlapping this picture. Uh, by about a third, and we take the next shot here, then the fourth shot here, then the fifth shot here. So you'll end up with five shots across if you zoom into one third, um, at least, sometimes if you overlap a little bit more, um, which is necessary sometimes if uh, there's a little less detail, then you may end up with five to seven, or six to seven shots across. So um, we try to keep it less than six because it's um, hard for Photoshop to process that much information. Then what we do, so this is the first row, and then you would go and position the camera down. I like to position it right here while I'm at this, and then slide it horizontal. So um, anyways, the next shot that you would take is the first shot here. So you have one third of the picture of the wall and two thirds of the picture of the painting. And then you would proceed to do the, one, the next shot uh, right here, and then across horizontally, and then you come and do the next row down. One of the tricks that we've learned is if we have dead spots, and by dead spots we just mean that there's particular areas of the painting that are all one color and really don't have that much information. Um, sometimes when Photoshop goes to pano stitch it, it doesn't know how to read it. So we take these little pieces of tape and um, we try to do it in a contrasting color and we try to do you know multiple pieces and we'll just put little pieces of tape on and then that way Photoshop knows where to register uh, the next shot. And, and the other thing that we need to make sure is, even if we get over to this edge, you know, like over here, and we only, you know, need uh, this particular thing, we can't, 
if we do two thirds of the shot off of the picture plane, picture the, the painting itself, it's gonna focus to the wall. And the wall is about, um, you know, the canvas depth is about an inch and a half to two inches. And there's a two by four that it's resting on. So it's four inches, it's four inches difference to, uh, from the camera to the to the um, distance to the wall. Anyways, it is enough to make this out of focus. So we need to make sure even if we end up over here and we only need a little strip of this, we still keep it one third on the wall and two thirds on the uh, on the painting itself. So the focus right now the focus is set to the center of the shot. So the focus will remain on uh, the plane of the of the painting itself and not the wall.